the coordination made yesterday between Kenya Kwanza government and ODM party is uh, one that clearly is aimed at undermining the effort by the Gen Z's to bring to the four club serious underlying issues uh, uh, in this economy. And to that extent, it undermines the very steady gain that have been achieved uh, by the struggle, uh, practice struggle by the young people in this country. To that extent, it is nothing to welcome or about. The next thing I would say is that all it does is it gives a breathing space for the current Kenya Kwanzaa administration. But from all indications, it is unlikely to deliver any solutions to the main challenge problems we develop in this country. Our problem that sparked the rebellion by the JC emanated from the bill, the finance bill 2024. And the key, the key indicator of the problem in that was the heightened taxation and uh, overburdening of tax burden to all Kenyans. And the key, the backbone to that also is we have seen underfunding of key social areas of budget from education, capitation to primary school, secondary school, universities. We have seen underfunding of health. We have seen underfunding all social infrastructure in 2014. We were a witness to the first Eurobot, to the first Eurobot loan that was acquired during Uhuru government's time. And as we tried to follow up, and as investigations continued, it came to a point where it was realized that out of 270 billion, which was actually collected by the government, only about 60 billion went to verifiable use of repaying a debt that had been taken over by during Kibaki's era. The rest of the money was allegedly deposited in some New York account. And I do recall very well, our, we ourselves still showing a lot of concern, when then Auditor General Ouko even indicated that he would visit New York, gather information, why that other money had not been limited to the central consolidated fund. And as we kept pushing for that, some evidence was made available that that money had been deposited into the central bank account. But as we tried to trace where that money went in terms of development project, because that was developed, that was money borrowed and it could only be used for development within our structure of government, so that evidence was not available. Now, from that incident, more borrowing have gone on, and even all the way up to this government to continue borrowing, both internally and externally. And now the pattern of repayment of those loans keep expanding. And it has now reached a point where the country cannot carry out any development. It cannot even carry out normal recurrent expenditure of supporting our children, our education, our health infrastructure on account of the huge debt burden the country has to pay out. We, the burden continue to increase and it has now reached a point where there is open correlation between the government's credit and tax, I mean taxation policy and the attempt to collect those taxes from Kenyan people, from businesses and so on and so forth and the failure of corresponding services to the population. That's where we are and uh, we don't foresee any meaningful solution coming from these people. They can't bring any solution unless they admit where the problem is stemming from. And I would also want to remind the country this. Those who have studied who those who are students of history, will recall that after the First World War, Germany was actually condemned to pay armistice as terms of war. They were coming to cumulate for about 18% of its GDP. Those who
those were one of the reasons why the German government defined those payments and even prepared for the Second World War that for, to avoid payment of those kind of the kind of debt obligations Kenyan people are being condemned to pay to, and these are poor people paying to rich international institutions, denying food, service, education, health, and the to poor people in that world countries.